Hello dear children, welcome to my science classes. Today we will talk about predator and prey and different food chains. If you are ready, let's get started. Our today's lesson contents are lesson objectives, predator and prey, food chain, food web, and at the end we will practice. Dear children, our lesson objectives are predator, prey, food chain, and food web. Dear children, now let's talk about the predator. What is a predator? In a food chain, a predator is an organism that eats another organism. On the screen, you can see how the lion chased the zebra. That means lion is a predator. Dear children, now let's talk about the prey. What is the prey? The prey is an organism which predator eats. Look at this picture where the seal called the fish. This poor fish is a prey. In this slide, you can see some examples of predator and prey. In the first picture, you can see how the lion called the zebra. Lion is a predator and the zebra is a prey. You can also look at the next two pictures where the bear is a predator and the fish is a prey. In the third picture, you can see the fox is a predator and the poor rabbit is a prey. Dear children, now let's talk about the food chain. In a food chain, energy is passed from one link to another. When an herbivore eats, only a fraction of energy becomes a, the new body mass. The, the rest of the energy is lost as waste or used up by the herbivore to carry out its life processes such as movement, digestion, and reproduction. So, when the herbivore is eaten by a carnivore, it passes only a small amount of total energy to the carnivore. So, dear children, look at the slide. In this slide, you can see a simple food chain which, which starts from the grass. And where the rabbit eats grass and the fox eats the rabbit. And the energy transfer from the herbivore to the carnivore and some energy will be wasted or used up by the carnivore. So it means the children that carnivore needs to eat many herbivores to get enough energy to grow. So because of the large amount of energy that is lost at each link, so the amount of energy that is transferred decreases each time. So the further along the food chain you go, the less food and energy remain available. Now let's talk about the most interesting part about the food web. So what is the food web? You know that most animals are part of more than one food chain and eat more than one kind of food in order to meet their food and energy needs. And these interconnected food chains form a food web. In the first part of the food web, you can see a small food chain that starts with a shrub. And this shrub is eaten by the rhino and giraffe. And these both animals are eaten by the lion. You can see this picture at this slide and just simply follow the arrows. Dear children, do you know why do the food chain can get a little bit complicated? Because animals can eat a variety of food. So, dear children, now let's start practice. Could you please guys give me an example of a consumer that makes the honey? You can think about this question and come back with your answer. Yes, you guys probably were absolutely right. Yes, it is a bee. Bee is a consumer that makes its own food and it's honey. 
So the second question is, what must the food chain always start with? You can also think about this question and come back with your answer. Yes, of course, it's a plant. Plant is a producer that takes energy from the sound. So, dear children, that is the end of our lesson. And in today's lesson, we talked about predator and prey, food chain and food web. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson and found that interesting. So, see you guys and bye-bye.